Hey everyone, Mike Schmitz here, and today I wanna to walk through what I call a personal retreat process. Now, what is a personal retreat? It's basically like a miniature version of Bill Gates' Think Week. He used to get away for an entire week to just think about the business. Well, I took that concept and I applied it to my personal life because I was having trouble with the 12-week year concept. I like the idea of setting those goals and working on them for 90 days, but after doing it a couple of times, I wasn't making any progress. And so I started to get away and just think about the specifics of that, wanted to basically go deeper to see if that provided more motivation and more clarity for achieving those goals, and it absolutely did. So I packaged that up into what I called Personal Retreat Handbook, a video course, and I've been doing it now every quarter for several years. And this is a process that I've taught hundreds of other people to follow, but I wanna give you a, a behind the scenes picture of how this works. I'm gonna be walking through my personal retreat process. I'll be showing you the template that I use in Obsidian for this now, and showing you the details of my own personal retreat from quarter three, 2023. If you decide you like this and you want to use this personal retreat template in your own Obsidian Vault, then there is a link to download that template below this video. But now let's jump in and take a look at how the personal retreat actually works. All right, so here we are in Obsidian and let's take a look at the template file for this personal retreat first. And I'll kind of walk through the different pieces that I have in here and then show you what the personal retreat actually looks like. So the first thing is just a date with a date token so that when this template is used, it's gonna to insert today's date there and then it will link that day from my daily notes to the day that the personal retreat actually took place. Next, I've, I've transcluded a couple of files here. One is my life theme, which is a personal mission statement. Uh, and I run cohorts every once in a while to help people kind of develop this, but this is basically to make sure, a one sentence summary uh, that I review regularly to make sure that I'm living in alignment with my vision and my values. The vision and the values inform the life theme, but they are separate. So the next thing that I've got here is I'm transcluding my personal core values, the things that drive what I say yes and what I say no to. The next part is a wheel of life. And the wheel of life basically is my way of assessing how happy I am with the different areas of my life that I consider to be important. So this is using the Obsidian Charts plugin, and uh, the type is a polar area chart. The labels, I've identified these, the eight most important ones for me, spiritual, career and work, love and relationships, health and fitness, personal growth, fun and recreation, social and finance. And then uh, below that, there are the data, uh, the values on a scale from zero, I am absolutely uh, frustrated by this, to 10, uh, absolutely satisfied with this. And so the default values I just use as, as five and those associate with the orders of the labels up above. So when I do my personal retreat, I just change these labels to the scores that I've identified for those different areas. The rest of this is just the different things that affect how the chart actually looks. But uh, I would recommend you probably just leave those as is for now. The next part is kind of a breakdown of the different scores for the Wheel of Life. So I've got different bold sections for spiritual career work. And then there's a colon. I'll put the number for my, my score there. And then I'll create several bullets on why I gave that score. There's nothing really qual qualitative about this. Uh, it, it's very how I feel about things. So I'm not looking for certain conditions to be met in order for my, me to give uh an area specific score. Really, it's just how do I feel about things? Um, so I'll do that and then I'll go into the retrospective section. And in the retrospective, I'll spend some time thinking about what did I accomplish, what went well, and what could have gone better. Again, I do this every 90 days. And every time I do this, I go into it thinking I really didn't accomplish all that much. And then when I sit and think about it for a while and I look back at my calendar and my task manager, I start to see the things that I did, the things that I shipped. And uh, this allows me to kind of celebrate some of those accomplishments because I, I tend to just move on to the next thing right away. Now, the next part here, this is where the magic happens, uh, the what should I section. These three questions I spend several hours thinking about. What should I start doing? What should I stop doing? And what should I keep doing? And they're purposely kind of vague. And I leave these open-ended because I'll get a lot of different 
uh, I'll, the, the things that I'll think of come from a whole bunch of different areas. I'm not trying to force my brain in a specific direction. I want it to be free to roam. In fact, when I first start doing this, I'll get a couple of things for each of these categories after about 20, 30 minutes, but I force myself to spend at least two to three hours in the section because if you just stay on these questions and let your brain unpack things, eventually you'll get to a whole nother level where you'll, you'll start to see the, the really good stuff. And then at the end of all of this, I have uh, planning at the bottom here. This is where I have, I usually like to pick just two goals, things to work on over the next 90 days. All right, so that's the template and you can download this using the, the link below this video. Uh, but what does this actually look like? Well, this is the personal retreat from quarter three, 2023, uh, that I I did for uh, this period that we're, as I'm recording this video from July to September of 2023. And I shared this with the Obsidian University cohort uh, that I did earlier this, uh, this summer. If you're interested in Obsidian University, you can check out the details at obsidianuniversity.com. Uh, but this is what it actually looks like uh, as I'm going through the personal retreat. So we got the date at the top. I did this one on June 26th. And there's my life theme. I help people find their why, multiply their time and talent, leave a bigger dent in the universe. That's what I want my life to be about. Then I've got my core values here. These are personal, obviously, but these are things that help me discern what I'm going to say yes to. If something doesn't align with these core values, then it's an automatic no. And then this is what the wheel of life looks like. All right, so this is mine when I was finished in the different areas of my life. Uh, and I'm gonna walk through this and share some of these details, even though there's some personal information in here, because you really need to kind of see this in order to get a feel for how this actually works. All right, so I'm not gonna blur out any of the, the details here. Just gonna be raw, shared this with the Obsidian University folks, like I said, and the feedback was great. So here we go. Uh, here's the spiritual section, and I gave the score an eight. This was my highest area, but you can see I had some wins. I felt I lacked consistency, stuck with my Bible reading plan, felt like my prayer life could be better. These are all just my opinion notes, right? I have no data to support any of this stuff. I don't really want that data. Um, I, I do actually track my habits using my daily notes. I've got a separate video on the daily questions that I do in Obsidian, and that is actually... Uh, informed by this daily questions dashboard, this other tab here. Let's jump over here real quickly. Uh, this is using the tracker plugin. I've got a whole separate video on how I do this, but I'm experimenting with building this into Canvas now. So when I do my personal retreat, I do review these things. I look at these different things. And every day I'm asking myself, did I do my best to grow spiritually, love my wife, love my kids, be a good friend? And this is all based on my intention. It's not based on the outcome. Right? So it's really the things that I can control. And if there are outliers here, I dig into why that why that's the case. And I've also got the averages here. So this is influencing, but it's not directly tied to the scores from that wheel of life. All right? So then here's career work. And you know, I left my integrator role at the, uh, at the day job and I went out on my own. I launched Obsidian University, that went well. The life theme cohort that I did went well. Did a webinar with my friend, Mike Vardy. You know, there were some positive signs here, but starting a new business, got to figure out how to earn a consistent income, right? Uh, love and family. My wife and I have had date nights consistently for a really long time, but those have kind of slipped lately. Uh, I do these one-on-ones with my kids. So once a week, I, I take one of my kids to a coffee shop. We hang out for an hour, play games, stuff like that. Those have been difficult. I feel like I'm always working. I'm not around as much as I'd like, but feel like uh, our kids are doing fairly well. Health and fitness. You know, I'm a health nut. I try to work out six days a week, but lately that's been slipping a little bit. So I'm putting on a little bit of weight. I'm the heaviest I've ever been still working out fairly consistently, but more skip days been under a lot of stress lately. I recognize then there's the things that I've done for personal growth. Um, lots of things I want to learn. I need time to go through the courses that I keep buying, barely keeping up with the reading for bookworm, right? Learning a lot out of necessity as I'm barking on this entrepreneurship adventure, but uh, I, I want to get out of that just in time mode and then fun and recreation. This is a little bit lower. Uh, I've still been able to do some things here. We've been doing, you know, basketball nights that's kind of getting into the social stuff, but, uh, it hasn't been a priority. So these are some of the lowest areas. And then obviously the lowest one here, finances, we've got credit card debt. I don't like it. There's some positive, positive signs here with the new business venture, but I got to figure out 
how these things are, are all going to work. Got to gain some momentum in this, uh, you know, that last bullet there. I want to figure this out by next quarter. All right. So then we get into the retrospective. What did I accomplish? Right. Well, the big thing, you know, I quit my job. I went out on my own and I did the life theme cohort and the Obsidian University cohort. I finished a half marathon Door County, did some great podcasts uh, for Focus. I played guitar on the worship team for a long time, but I switched to bass recently and that really has been going well. Uh, what went well, Obsidian University went really well. Life Theme Launch went well. We built a bathroom in our, our basement. We've got uh, a couple of kids have a, a bedroom in the basement. So five kids in one tiny little bathroom when it's bedtime, it, a lot of congestion there. So we, we made an investment and put in a, a, a bathroom in the basement. To, and that's been uh, that's been great. Uh, the cod- podcast keep growing, Craft and Commerce. I went to that conference. It was incredible. That was wind in my sails. What could have gone better? You know, the webinar I did with Mike Vardy, it went well, but we didn't have as many people sign up for it as we we wanted. Uh, I've been doing this faith-based productivity community for a while. Needs some more attention. I got to figure out where do I want to invest my my time and, and energy. My newsletter is not really a newsletter at this point. I'm working with a coach actually at, uh, right now to, to kind of change that, but it's been kind of inconsistent and really hasn't had a specific direction. I do screencasts online modules. Those have been kind of stressful because of the limited bandwidth that I have. I do some articles for the suite setup, but those, again, have felt like a rush right at the end. Uh, I want to skip back to publishing regular blog, blog posts. Um, ads have kind of dried up for the two podcasts that I do that aren't on the Relay Network, which is Bookworm with Joe Bielig and then the Intentional Family with my wife. And then Intentional Family, we just got to get on the same page with this. It seems like it's always last minute. That's always kind of stressful. Uh, And then what should I start doing, stop doing, and keep doing, right? I'm going to start working with Matt Raglan for the newsletter. That was a question mark when I I, uh, went through this personal retreat, but I've since uh, signed up and I'm working with him. I want to start getting up earlier. I want to get serious about the business and budgeting. I want to do some coaching with somebody who had reached out to me a while back, Uh, but I've just been too busy to to finish up the the paperwork um, and to send in the, the, the forms. So... I don't know if he still has an opening, but that's uh, something that I, I want to uh, start doing. And uh, I'm considering offering coaching to the people that are in my Obsidian University and faith-based productivity communities. Um, what should I stop doing? And these are all things that are, I'm, I'm, these are question marks, right? So I haven't really identified at this point any of these things that I'm going to stop doing. Uh, but as I went through this, this retreat, screencast online modules, writing for the suite setup. I've been doing some business consulting and then the Intentional Family Podcast. These are the things that came to mind as I went through this. Out of all of these, I think the thing that I have since taken action on, because every single time I do a personal retreat, I force myself to pick at least one thing I'm going to stop doing, would be the the consulting stuff. Um, when I first got into this, first left the, the day job, uh, I, I had some success as an integrator. So I started working with a couple of people for uh, providing some sort of operations guidance uh, things like that. And I work with a couple of clients and those are going well, but I don't, at this point, you know, I had an idea of, I was going to grow this and I was going to work with five different clients. I'm not sure I want to do that anymore. I'll work with the ones that I'm working with because I really like working with those people, but I'm not really looking to add any new ones because I want to have that bandwidth to keep doing, you know, building the Obsidian University community. Uh, I'm going to be doing another cohort here shortly. You know, that was really a lot of fun, had some great feedback from the people that were there. So that's the thing I want to focus on. Um, but now the planning part here, there's two things, and they're actually related to that. So I've got this, this newsletter, which has been about 1,800 people for a long time, uh, but it's because I haven't really promoted it. It doesn't really have a specific, this is what you're going to get when you sign up for it. So I'm going to try to pivot that a little bit and start talking about Obsidian more. Um, so that newsletter, once I have a specific direction and I create some sequences, like this is what you're actually going to get when you when you sign up for this newsletter, I believe that's going to help a lot. It's going to provide a lot of clarity and it'll help me uh, help people uh, because they'll know exactly what to expect from it. With the intention of that newsletter obviously is going to point to Obsidian University, my cohort where I walk people through how to use this like faith-based or values-based productivity stuff inside of Obsidian, which is absolutely perfect for it, for that, in my opinion. This is an example of that, this personal retreat. So that's how I do the personal retreats in Obsidian. Uh, it's not anything too technical, but it really is the perfect platform for this because now I've got this link 2023 Q3, which I can link to in my home dashboard or like a life OS dashboard. I can go back and I can review these things periodically to make sure that I'm still on the right track. 
All right, so there you have it. That is my personal retreat from quarter three, 2023. And obviously there's a lot more that we can get into regarding the approach and some of the details like the location and things like that. In fact, as I did this personal retreat, I did it from a getaway house, which is kind of like a tiny house in the middle of the woods. And I'm working on another video on my impressions and are kind of a review of that process. Spoiler alert, I really enjoyed it. So stay tuned for more personal retreat resources. But remember, if you want to use this personal retreat approach in your own Obsidian Vault, there is a link below this video. So go grab that template and good luck on your next personal retreat.